Hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Yates and Ms. Garcia again, and we are going to be going over the answers to the Friday Spiral Math for April 10th. Uh, Ms. Garcia is going to take the odds, and I'll take the evens. I have already went ahead, and we put together the first part of the answer. So, Ms. Garcia, do you want to go over that first part of the answer, and then I'll write in the second part for us. Yes, so they asked you guys what is the value and place name of the underlying digits. So for the first answer sentence you guys have, and you guys can always swap them, you guys could have said the value first, but we started with the place name and we said that the place name of the underlying digit is hundredths. Make sure you have the th at the end and not just ds because it's hundredths, that's for the decimals. And then um, talking about the value. So your answer sentence for this one should be the value of the underlined <clears throat> digit is, and you guys should have put four hundredths here, and make sure you guys do have that th <clears throat> at the end of hundredths, because we're not talking about hundreds, we're talking about hundredths. You could also this put it. Yeah, you could also put it here as zero and four hundredths too, just in case. Correct, Mundo. All right, on to number two. All right, move on down to that one. Laura uses a distributive property to help her multiply. She writes six times 23 equals six times blank plus six times three. What number should replace the square? I'm gonna go ahead and you could do it one of two ways. Since there is a question there, I could say the number in the square should be and uh, you could, your natural sense could be a little different. You could say the number that replaces the square. That's fine too. Any way really works as long as you have a, some sort of answer sentence there. And I'm going to look at that and it looks like I'm using distributive property and I'm going to take that six times 23 and break it down. And the number that's going to go in right here into the square, I'm going to say is 20. So that becomes six times 20 plus six times three. All right, let's go on down to number three. All right, so number three says, Mia bicycled 11.8 miles in three hours. About how many miles did Mia bicycle in one hour? So boys and girls, they want you guys um, to round your, um, to be rounding because, it, or not rounding, estimating because our keyword in this is going to be that about. So is what I did is I rounded 11.8 to 12. And then I kept my three. And so um, I did mental math as to, well, I did that 12 divided by the three hours <clears throat> and when you divide 12 by 3, you get 4. And you're right, Ms. Garcia, that's an easy math fact. So we just have to write it out to show what we're doing. We don't have to necessarily do the dividing box and everything. Yes. So for your guys' answer sentence, you should say Mia, or you can say she, whichever one you guys prefer, um, bicycled or biked, whichever one. I like bike because it's shorter. Yeah, bicycle is a weird word to me. <laughs> Mia biked about, and your keyword in this is going to be about boys and girls because we did do that estimating, four, um, four miles in one hour. So make sure you guys have the word about four miles in one hour. Those are all very key words because we want to make sure that we're labeling what our floor represents with miles. So yes, Great. that concludes our number three. All right, we'll move on down to number four. 
Okay, so suppose your parents go food shopping with $180.26 in cash. They spend $74.59 on food. About how much money do they have left? Round each amount to the nearest 10. So a couple of keywords and kind of similar to what we talked about with Ms. Garcia a minute ago is, um, you know, that word about. So I see that here, about, and then also round each number to the nearest 10. So it's pretty clear that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rounding the numbers $186.26 and $74.59 to the nearest tens place. And that's the key thing, not the nearest whole number, but to the nearest tens place. So let me go ahead and uh, get my answer sentence ready. And I will write. And I'm going to say they will have. And again, that keyword is about, which means I'm going to be doing some estimating and rounding. They will have about, and I'll just put here blank dollars. Put my period, and then I'll go over here and do some rounding. Let me go ahead and move my paper over here. So I'm going to look, and I see that $180.26 in cash. I'm going to round that to the nearest tens place. So basically, I'm going to get rid of the 26 cents. There's nothing in the ones place. So my new value is just going to be $180. So $180.26 rounded to the nearest tens place is 180. When I look at $74.59, oops. When I look at $74.59, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let me see here that 59 cents. If I look at that, that would bring it up. So the four here is really the digit I'm looking at, not really the 59 cents, but the four here is the ones place. So I'm gonna look at my seven and the seven, I'm gonna look over here at the one and since it's four or less, let it rest, I'm gonna say that I will round this to $70. $74.59 rounded to the nearest tens place is going to be $70. When I have those rounded out like that, it's easy for me to do some mental math, or if you want to work it out, either way. 180 subtract 70, I'll put a sub subtraction sign right here, and it's going to give me $110. That means that they'll have about $110. You know what, and I think I might add a little bit more to my answer sentence. They will have about $110 left. I think that's really important, and I kind of made a mistake there and not putting that in. So make sure you do so, boys and girls. We'll go on to number five now. All right. All right. So number five says, bananas are on sale for 54 cents a pound. What is the cost of a bunch of bananas that weighs two and a half pounds? So boys and girls, for your answer <laughs> sentence, you should have <clears throat> the cost of um, two and a half pounds of bananas. Okay is and then put your dollar sign and then a blank that way we know where our answer is going to go once we solve it out perfect all right so in order to solve this you had to multiply your two and a half to your 2.5 times 0.54 so we always want to write those vertically just like mr yates is doing <clears throat> Perfect. So, um, and then I personally add a zero at the end of my 2.5 just for like place value um, kind of reasons, but you guys don't have to. Um, yeah. Um, so when you multiply this out, you get um, four times five gives you 20. You carry your two. And then four times two gives you eight, and then you add the two, which gives you 10. 
and then you put your zero down for your placeholder. And then five times five gives you 25. Carry your two. And then five times two gives you 10, add your two, or add the two, which gives you 12. And then you wanna go ahead and add those together. So zero plus zero gives you zero, zero plus five gives you five, two plus one is three, and then your one. And then don't forget to put your guys' decimals. So you wanna count how many um, numbers you have behind the decimals, which would be three. So then you wanna move your decimal from the far right three places over on your answer to where you get 1.35. Perfect. So your guys' answer should be a dollar and 35 cents. Perfect. Great. All right, we're gonna go on now to number six. Let's scroll up here so I can read a little bit better. Jamie spent $12.48 on groceries. How much change will he receive if he pays with a $20 bill? So I'll just put here Jamie. Oh, always misspell receive. It's one of Mr. H's bugaboo words. All right, receives blank dollars in change. And I'll put a period at the end of my answer sentence. Uh, I'll put answer and work here so I remember. This is my answer side, this is my work side. Uh, reading it over, it says that they're asking how much change you'll receive if he pays with a $20 bill. So we're gonna do some subtracting. We're gonna take our $20 bill, put it up top. I'm gonna annex and add two zeros and a decimal so it makes it a lot easier for me to line up my decimal, which is really important. I'm gonna subtract the $12.48 that he paid for in groceries. Now that I've got my subtraction, my lined up decimals, and my annex zeros, it's easy for me to subtract. 10 minus 8 is 2. I'll put a 9 right here. So 9 minus 4 is 5. Drop down that decimal. I'm going to make this into, it uh, looks like another 9. So it'll be 9 minus 2 is 7. And this is a 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0 now. So I see he received $7.52 in change. All right, then we're gonna go ahead on down to number seven. So number seven says, Juan uses a plastic container to store leftover food. The measurements of the container are shown in the diagram below. How many cubic centimeters is the volume of the container? So boys and girls, we are going to be finding the volume of this container. So, so um, for your answer sentence, you should have um, the container is. How about the volume of the container is? Oh, yeah, you're going hear it. The volume of the container is. And you're going to want to do blank because we haven't solved what the volume is. And they said that it's gonna be measured in cubic centimeters. So make sure you have your centimeters cubed or you can write out cubic centimeters, whichever one you guys prefer, both work. All right, so our formula for finding volume is V equals length times width times height. Alrighty, so our length is going to be side to side, which is going to be our 14. So under our L, we're going to want to write our 14. And then our width is going to be front to back, which is our 10. Just like Mr. Needs is showing you guys right there. So then under our W, we're going to go ahead and write our 10. And our height is going to be our 9 centimeters, just like Mr. Yates highlighted for us. And we're gonna go ahead and write that. And then when we solve that out, um, 14 times 10 gives you 140. And then when you multiply 140 times nine, you should get 1,260 is what I got. <clears throat> yep, just like Mr. Yates did. So your final answer should be 
The volume of the container is 1,260 centimeters cubed. Sounds great. All right, we're going to move on to number eight. Divide. Check your answer using multiplication. So let me just go ahead and put a division sentence here. 1,960 divided by seven equals, and I will use this blank space here to write my answer. I'm gonna go over here. What's that, Shakes? We gotta go sideways? Oh, thanks for telling me. I'm glad you reminded me today, boys and girls, because I wanna make sure I'm always going sideways if I have lined paper. If you don't have lined paper, you don't need to worry about this, but if you do, it really, really helps. Both Ms. Garcia and I have been talking about how much easier it is when you write it by keeping the numbers in the lanes. It really is much better. Safer dividing. So I'll go quickly through this. Seven times one. Nope. Seven times 19. Seven times something to get 19. Yep, I can do 14. So I'll do seven times two. 19 minus 14 equals five. Drop down the six. Seven times eight is going to equal 56. That'll give me zero. I have another zero down here. I need to drop down. And seven times zero is going to equal zero. No remainder today. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll make sure everyone can see that correctly, how I did it. And then I'm going to go out over to here and write that again up on my answer sentence or my number sentence. So 1,960 divided by seven is 280. And that's our quotient. And that's also our last problem for this spiral math. We'll see you next time for spiral math. Bye-bye, boys and girls.